Hey, I hope you're having an amazing day. So I haven't filmed for like two weeks. So technically I would be on week six of the bean protocol. Um, uh, so I just wanted to update you on that. It's been a really cool journey um, and it definitely didn't go how I expected it would at all. Um, I am not following the bean protocol anymore. Um, I... I'm trying to think how that actually happened. I guess I kept going off protocol in ways that didn't serve me like nutritionally, but I believe that we do certain things and go through certain experiences for a reason to kind of gain clarity and come into alignment with who we're supposed to be, um, allowing us to show up as like our highest self. And looking back, I can now see why I was allowing myself to go off protocol um, and then explore with eating sugar guilt-free. Um, I do feel like eating sugar was definitely much lower um, guilt-producing than it has been in the past, but um, yeah, here's my, here's my sugar detour right here. So the sugar, it feels so good in the moment, obviously. It tastes amazing um i feel like i get an energy high and i don't feel any immediate um repercussions like physical body wise like i i honestly feel that my body processes it pretty well um if you would have asked well a lot of the people that are close to me <laughs> one of them reminded me and i'm super grateful that yeah you used to say that sugar like didn't affect you at all Okay, that is what I thought. Um, anyways, I... Oh, what did I do? Okay, so allowing myself to go off protocol, I, I taught yoga, and then I went to Walgreens specifically to get the Mellow Cream Pumpkins because, well, I've loved those since I was a kid. And anyways, I hacked the bag for dinner and most of the rest of the bag for breakfast. Like, I really went off the deep end. Um... And then what happens? The following day, I wake up and I told my husband, I'm like, I am just so sad and I don't know why. And I was just feeling so down and dark. <laughs> and then I was just crying and I was like, I, I don't think anything's wrong, but I'm just so sad. And it is as dramatic as it sounds, but like the feelings were so real, so real. Um... So anyways, and then, oh, yeah, talking with him, we're like reflecting back and I'm like, yeah, Kylie, I think this has happened to you before. I don't know how, well, I guess it's probably happened a lot, but it's happened a couple of other times where I think I've connected the like depressed mood to a really big sugar binge. Um, but apparently I needed a couple or a few times or more to really make, um, that connection and let it like integrate into my mind and my body um so sugar definitely depresses my mood I have my notes here um zaps my confidence in my self-worth like I literally want to stay in bed I don't want to see anyone I don't even want to talk to anyone on the phone because I'm feeling so bad about myself and feeling like I don't have anything to offer to the world and then also when you compound the guilt of eating the sugar, um, it's just so much worse because that just amplifies what I just told you. Um, yeah, that guilt spiral. So, yeah, that's kind of how my bean protocol ended. But it ended in a transition to something different. So, it's funny. I don't know if for you guys, sometimes you might buy something or come across something and it doesn't fully resonate at the time or you don't need it um but then later you just have like that urge or that ping um as lacey phillips says to go pick it up use it whatever so that's kind of where i went um i bought this book body love last year probably a year ago around a year ago and I think I remember opening it like once and for whatever reason it didn't stick 
So it went on my bookshelf and that's where it's been ever since. We moved since then. So it's on another bookshelf and it hadn't been read. Um, but yeah, I felt called to pull out this book. And yeah, it's Body Love by Kelly Levesque. Um, so I was just consumed with this book like I was so sucked in it was like speaking to me it made so much sense so the idea is that you with each meal you have a balance of fat fiber protein and greens and when you have that correct balance for your body it keeps your blood sugar stable um, and then you're less likely to have crashes low energy which is one of the things that obviously i was doing the beam protocol for so i started experimenting with this in the way of smoothies she has what's called a fab four smoothie and it includes that ratio and they're super simple like i'm just gonna share one. Oh, i like almost turned right to the page okay so this one is peanut butter cacao nib so it's one serving of chocolate protein powder, two tablespoons of peanut butter or almond butter, any nut butter. Um, so you have your protein, you have your fat, and then one to two tablespoons of chia seeds, I always do too, um, your fiber, and then two cups of unsweetened nut milk. Um, I do coconut or almonds, and then one tablespoon, mm, sorry, teaspoon of cacao nibs. So if you, um, want to you can add ice to that but you don't have to and obviously you could add greens to that too um oh my god I'm, I'm getting so excited but so distracted oh so in her book kelly levesque says that we're not children like we don't need snacks so she says that if you eat this way you will stay full for a good six hours before you feel ready to eat again and that's without dips and that's with energy and I know in certain circumstances she like has bridge snacks for people um, if you need a hit of something extra just depending on your body and your lifestyle um, but I never really felt like I needed a bridge snack and okay so let me take it back to the bean protocol. Um, I felt nourished eating the way that I did, but I also was very hungry soon after eating and I definitely still had cravings, hence the going off the wagon like crazy. Um, and I definitely still had crashes. So I definitely took a lot of naps still. So those were things that I was trying to correct. And anyways, I kind of adapted my bean bowl by adding, so okay, my favorite is beans, rice with a sweet potato and some tomatoes. So I tried adding avocado and hemp seeds on top and sometimes a fried egg and that kept me full for so very long. I know what goes against the, you know, separating the fat from the beans, but um, so far it's really working for me. I love that. Um, and then obviously the smoothies uh working very well too sorry the sliding is it's interesting hopefully this is okay um but yeah so i feel nourished i stay full for lengthy periods of time um i just feel like i have a lot of energy which feels so good and i'm assuming that's because my blood sugar is staying stable i'm not you know eating root for breakfast and then immediately crashing and feeling that low state um it's really empowering <laughs> and uh, oh like I don't have the urge to nap I cannot tell you guys how many years I've been like struggling with fighting the urge to nap or most of the time giving in to it and then feeling really guilty about it so that in and out of itself is huge huge progress um oh and then like on the bean protocol um kelly levesque advises very little fruit so like a quarter to a half a cup per day or like one serving and some of her smoothies have fruit in them so that's where it would come in or you could have it for like dessert or whatever um the interesting thing is when i'm nourished and i'm not having the blood sugar crashes i'm not craving fruit which is just so weird because before the bean protocol like i i ate so much fruit so much fruit 
probably part of my problem. <laughs> not saying the fruit's not healthy, I just definitely overdid it and I ate it, you know, just fruit to where I would crash so I didn't have the other things to help um, support and nourish my body. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at now. Um, I think I said earlier in the video, it's been a week and a half since I've been eating this new weight and I didn't have sugar cravings at all for like the first week and then I think a little bit after that, well I guess it was just two days ago, I was like I'm really craving sugar but in this instance I don't think that it was a like my body needing something, I think that it was my mind trying to escape so I feel like my day wasn't very purposeful that day and that was like my pull and it was really interesting I sat with that feeling the whole day which I don't usually do that I definitely escape and go away and it was definitely uncomfortable like it was like this angry energy in my body and it just felt tense and it's not very good um, I journaled about it a lot and somehow I made it through which is huge like that's something to celebrate um, the following day I felt a lot better and then I think I had a craving but it was a lot like it was much milder so yeah that's that's where I'm at I just thought I would update um thank you for watching if you have any questions uh feel free to reach out and um if you have any insight i'd love it if you um want to share with me but anyhow oh and the whole reason for not filming for this long well part of it is hello deep 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 dark hole um that's what happens and so I'm really excited about the possibility of being able to consistently show up for myself um, by eating in this new way so yeah but at the same time oh okay so let me just go ahead and tell you this part too so while I've been doing this whole food thing and learning a lot about myself um, I've also been diving into human design and I am well okay if you're not familiar with it google it you can get your chart and it's kind of like a blueprint for for your human design for you um, I'm not the best to explain it, but I looked into my type. There's five types. I'm a manifesting generator, and I have always felt so guilty about starting things and not finishing them. Like, I would beat myself up and then hopping from thing to thing to thing and being like a multitasker and just feeling really, like, unproductive and like I just not doing a good job as a human, I guess. Um, but human design says that manifesting generators should follow what lights them up and as soon as it stops lighting you up, let go and move on to the next thing. Even if you don't finish that thing, it is um, positive because it is using your energy because manifesting generators generate energy. You have to expend a certain amount and that actually gives you more energy. So anyhow um my battery is about to die so thank you again for watching and i hope that you have an amazing day it was rushing because my battery died but i just wanted to say this last little bit um that i am super grateful for the bean protocol and the journey that it took me on i feel like it really like shook up my habits and allowed me to explore a lot of new things um obviously the no fruit thing was huge 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 which allowed me to explore my relationship with food sugar cravings um obviously i feel like it reignited like my love and appreciation for beans and also highlighted like how nourishing they are and i really like that also it's so easy i feel like i was stuck in a funk of like if i wanted beans i would eat canned beans because i was too um lazy to soak them but that was simply because like i hadn't done it enough it's so simple to literally just soak some beans the night before and then throw them in the instant pot 
yeah so super grateful for that um i obviously i think that the beam protocol is great and clearly has been successful for so many people and i probably could have made it successful for me i just had the urge to try something else and um i think that's kind of how i'm going to i don't know live um going forward is comes back to that human design go with what lights you up and then let go when it no longer lights you up and i feel like that has really brought me into alignment in eating so i don't know if this is like my you know eating for life or if there's something like in the horizon for me but i am again super grateful and also super thankful for where i am now and um yeah so anyhow see you next time